Hi everyone, welcome to video 3 in the C-Star Roundup series. As you know, the C-Star Roundup is a group that anyone can join and in this group we collaborate to image targets with our C-Stars. I pick a target each month and then we all collaborate and get as much data as we can on that target and by doing that we can collect a lot more data than any single individual can and we can get better images with our C-Stars. Having a new target each month also keeps us motivated to go out there and use our C-Stars. For the last month, which is August 2024, the target that I had selected was the iris nebula. Now this is a very nice looking nebula and unlike the nebula that we typically image this one is more blue instead of red and this is a broadband target so I had requested to image this nebula without any nebula filter and after I put out that request I have received over 8600 images from everyone's sea stars and that's over 24 hours of data. So I selected the best 16 hours out of that 24 hours to process and I have stacked all of that data into a single raw stacked TIFF file and that's available for all of you to download as well and you can process along if you like. Everyone gets slightly different results and I'm always excited to see what uh, what you would get with this data. For instructions on how to transfer data from your C-Star to the computer, check out the link in the description of this video or check out the previous video. Now to get started, here is how to upload the data from your computer onto the server so that it reaches me. Once you have copied the files over from the C-Star to your computer, we need to zip up all of these files to upload them. So simply select all of the files. On Windows, we can do that by hitting Ctrl A to select all of the files, then simply right clicking and clicking Compress to Zip File. And that will compress all of the files into one zip folder that we can upload. Once you have the zip file, you can click on the link in the description of this video and that will take you to this page. Now you simply hit select files and select that zipped folder and click open. Now you simply need to type in your first and last name so we can give you proper credit for the files you submitted. And then simply hit upload. And as soon as you see this confirmation screen saying upload has finished, you are all done. Now if you downloaded the stacked raw file from the link in the description below, this is the one. It'll be titled result.irisnebula.cstar.16 hours because I had stacked 16 hours. Uh, now you can save this file to anywhere on your computer and then just drag and drop it into Serial to open or you can also click open up here and then navigate to wherever you saved that file. Now when you first open that stacked file, it's going to look very very dark and that's because it's in a linear format without any additional processing. So we go right here to the bottom where it says linear, click on that and click on auto stretch. And now you can see that the file has been stretched but of course it does, uh, it does look very very green. Uh, that's not a problem, uh, we'll just move on to the next step where we will correct that. So here are the steps that I like to follow. The first step is if needed, I can crop the image to get rid of any really bad artifacts uh, along the edges. But when you're stacking a lot of data, it's not really too much of a problem. So in this case, I'm not going to bother cropping, uh, partly because I can't really see what the background here looks like. I could look at the individual channels. For example, in the red channel, I can see that the outer regions are not too terrible. If there was no data along the outer edges, for example, they were completely black, I would crop them out just by clicking on the screen and dragging. And uh, I think something like this might be good if there were a lot of dark, dark artifacts. I do want to have the target relatively centered. And then just right click and click crop. But in this case, I'm not going to do that. And to get to this view, I simply clicked on the red channel up at the top. So you can see all of these black and white channels and how they combine to make this RGB image. So I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll just click somewhere outside to get rid of that crop box because we do not need to crop this image. So I'll go back to the RGB screen. The second step that I like to follow is to do background extraction and that's what will help us get rid of this green color. So I'll go up here to image, go to background extraction right here 
and all you have to do is simply click generate and when you do that you'll see a large number of red squares pop up on the screen those are the squares that are sampling the background to determine uh, what the background's actual color is and then they will remove any any gradients or any color casts in the background. Now one thing to note is that we want enough of these squares to cover the background but we don't need too many because then some of them might end up on bright stars. We only want these red squares on the background itself, not on the object, not on any nebulosity and not on any bright stars. Now there are two ways you can decrease how many squares there are. You can decrease the samples per line which let's say if I do that you'll see that the number of squares decreases or I can reset that and I can decrease the grid tolerance by decreasing the grid tolerance the overall number of squares on the outer regions remains the same but any areas of nebulosity or any brighter regions will be uh, will not have any squares on them anymore and I don't want any squares on the nebula itself or on the nebulosity which I can for example see by clicking on the red channel you can see that there is some dust and nebulosity around uh, this object. Now if you do notice any of these red squares on a bright star or on a nebula you can simply right click them to make them disappear and you can zoom in using your mouse wheel. So there we go I right I right clicked on this one and then that disappeared and by using the left click I can place them manually as well. I just want to make sure that uh, most regions of the background have some squares. Okay so now that that's done I simply click compute background and there we go. That gets rid of most of the gradients. Click apply now you can see that uh, there are some regions along the edges that don't look great but that's okay those will get cropped out in the end also we will darken the image quite a bit more later so uh, any of those imperfections will not be visible now the next thing we want to do is color calibration so to do that go to image processing color calibration and photometric color calibration now over here we need to type in the name of the object or the NGC number or Messier number. I'll just type in Iris Nebula and there it is. Now the C star will automatically get all of the data uh, from the images themselves. So we have the focal length and we have the pixel size. And we will leave everything else as default and just click OK. Next we are going to deconvolve the image or sharpen the image. Click on image, deconvolution. And over here, I like to leave the default settings as they are. Uh, just use blind deconvolution. Now, all we're going to do here is click Generate PSF. And right underneath PSF Preview, uh, that's where the uh, simulated star image will pop up. Now, this, this process can take a few minutes. So just uh, go get a coffee or a tea or something and then come back once this is done. So that's what the average star in this image looks like. Now, just click Apply it is done click close now depending on your uh, now depending on the speed of your computer these uh, processes might take a little bit longer for you on my computer it took about five seconds to do that last part but you know it could be 30 seconds could be a minute uh, just go get some tea and uh, then come back now step number five is to stretch the data. What that means is that uh, the way the data is looking on the screen is not how it actually is. Uh, this is how the data actually looks right now. And now we are going to stretch the data so that uh, the brightness and darkness values are well represented. To do that, we go to image processing, go to generalized hyperbolic stretch transformation. Now, first thing I like to do is zoom in to 100% and click enter. Now uh, we want to get rid of this empty space to the very left uh, of our histogram. Uh, we can do that just by clicking uh, just to the left of this. So we don't want all of that empty space. So just click somewhere here, for example. And then you can see that this histogram has been pushed to the left. Now there's only a tiny bit of space. So we're doing that just to bring the background value closer to zero. Click apply and now click on linear stretch and switch it back to generalized hyperbolic transform. So click right in the middle of this peak underneath just uh, 
anywhere like that. You don't have to be precise, just anywhere underneath the middle here is fine. And then as you can see on the right, it generates a value. It's a very small value, but that is all we need. For stretch intensity or local stretch intensity, just maximize this up to 15. Just drag this all the way to the right. And now we can start adjusting the stretch factor. So I'll grab this slider and start pulling it towards the right. Now increase the stretch factor until you can just begin to see the, the nebula in the image. You don't want it to be too bright at this point. The nebula is just beginning to show up, but it's still very dark. And click Apply. Now click Reset. And up here, instead of 100 times magnification, just click on one to reset this. Now we're gonna redo the same thing again, but doing it in two steps gives us a little bit more control. So just click right underneath the middle here, and that will set the symmetry point over here. Pull the local stretch intensity all the way to the right, so just maximize that, and now start increasing the stretch factor again. And as you can see, the image is starting to get brighter, uh, now increase this until you're happy with the brightness of the faintest parts of this image, of the background dust. Now you can start adjusting the local stretch intensity. Now as you decrease this, you'll see that it's starting to reduce the brightness of the, some of the brighter regions in the image. Background is a little bit bright, but what we can do is we can adjust this symmetry point now. So you can either manually adjust it to the left or right or you can also just type in a value over here or you can click this plus or minus button. Now if, if there's a very very bright region right in the center, for example if you're imaging the Orion Nebula, you can also decrease this highlight protection point. So just drag that to the left and as you can see it'll decrease some of the very very bright regions there. So I'll, this is before, this is after. It's a subtle effect but you don't want to overdo it. Most of the time I like to just leave this at maximum and then just make the adjustments to these top three sliders. Okay, I think that is looking pretty good. Now I'll just click apply and then close. Now the next step, which is um, step six is to remove any green cast that you might notice in the image. You can do that by going to image and remove green noise. Um, all you would do is just click apply and click close. So that would remove any green noise left in the background or any green cast. But this is before, this is after. Hmm, actually, it did make a little bit of a difference, so I'll leave it as is. Uh, you do not want to use this uh, the remove green cast function uh, for for uh, some narrow band data that might have uh, some green in the image, for example, the dumbbell nebula. Next, we want to adjust the color saturation if needed. So we'll just go up to image processing, click on color saturation, and just adjust that up a little bit. We don't want to overdo that either, but Something like this is looking pretty good and you can hit this preview button to undo and redo then just click apply and To improve contrast in the image a little bit more You can also go to image processing and click on contrast limited adaptive histogram Equalization and I'll show you what that does. So this uh, process here will allow you to uh, Equalize the brightness between the brightest areas and the darkest areas. So it'll just make the contrast a little bit better by adjusting these two sliders you can bring out some more detail in this in this dark gas and dust but it is easy to overdo it so you don't want to overdo it either just to make little subtle adjustments and then you can click on the preview button again to see a before and after this does bring out the contrast a little bit more but it does increase the noise as well so in this case I'll just click cancel I won't use that feature uh, but then any other adjustments that we need to make we can go to image processing and use histogram transformation to make those and this is what we are going to see here uh, if this is too zoomed in for example to 100 and you don't see the histogram just click on this one that'll zoom it back out to one 
And now you can grab this arrow at the very left and move that to the right to darken the background or darken the darker parts of the image. And this middle one, you can move to the left to brighten the average brightness of the image or move it to the right to darken the average value. Now it's a matter of preference how you want uh, the image to look at the end, whether you want uh, to show a lot of detail in the darker regions of the image or if you're mainly interested in just the bright nebula and not so much in the outer dark regions. Uh, I like to split the difference and uh, and show both of them pretty well. So uh, let's see how this is looking. So I can apply that and then I can click the undo and redo here to see. Yep, I think this does look better. Yep, that looks better to me. And now um, I can I can do the final crop for this image. Um, because I didn't do it in the beginning. Some people prefer to just crop in the beginning and uh, there are some good reasons for doing that as well. Uh, for example, it could make background extraction more accurate or color calibration, but uh, this image looked decent enough. There weren't any massive dark areas along the outer edges, so I did not crop it in the beginning. Uh, but now I can just left click and drag and uh, crop to how I want the image to look let go and then just right click and click crop and I'm just zooming in and out using the mouse wheel. So uh, that looks like a pretty good image of this nebula. Uh, there is very very little noise uh, in the background and the nebula shows up quite well. You can see these darker regions on the outer uh, reaches of the nebula and you can see the very very nice blue color and of course there is uh, this very very bright central region and there appears to be a darker lane going through here. Now if you want to share the image on your phone it's fine to leave it vertical like this but if you do want to uh, turn the image around and make it horizontal you can right click go to rotate and crop and just type in 90 degrees and just uncheck crop and when you click apply it will turn the image to the right Okay, that is our image of the Iris Nebula using the Seastar S50 and 16 hours of data. Uh, and I think that's that's quite a nice image for a Seastar S50. And lastly, once you're happy with how your image looks, you just click on this button at the very top, the downward facing arrow, and uh, just choose where you want to save the image. And I always like to save the image in two different formats. One is a TIFF format, uh, and this is useful if you ever want to make any edits in the future. So up here it shows up as .tiff, save that. And uh, for a processed image, I just leave it in 16-bit unsigned integer format so it doesn't take up too, too much space, save that. And then I like to also go back up there, save it again, but, in this, uh, but this time in JPEG format and you can see uh, in front of the file name, they switched to .jpg. Now, that's the image that you can share online. For quality, I leave that at 100%. So, uh, yeah, if you want to download that data and process it yourself and see what kind of results you get, uh, yeah, that would be awesome. I would love to see your results. And if you post them online anywhere on social media, um, for example, on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, uh, you can tag me at Abdur Astro and All Star Telescope. And um, yeah, then that'll notify us that you've shared your image and we would love to see it and see what kind of results you can get as well. And uh, again, I want to thank everyone who sent in some data and here are the participants for this time for the Iris Nebula. Now I've had some new people reach out to me as well who want to join our, uh, our C-Star Roundup group. So I think next time we'll have even more participants for the Bubble Nebula. Yeah, so if you have a C-Star, get out there and get some data and let's see what we can do together. Mm -hmm.